The radioactive contaminants at the lab are carcinogens. These radionuclides look like life-giving elements to the human body. Their hazardous life that these elements can cause harm to health extends for 20 half-lives. Strontium-90 looks like calcium and it is taken up by the human body into our teeth and our bones. It has a half-life of 29 years. It can there cause leukemias, lymphomas, and other cancers. That 29-year half-life has a biologic hazardous life of 600 years. This is important because one of the, the comments in the EIS is that there will be a natural attrition or a natural, you know, kind of watering down, if you will, if there's just long enough. It's been 59 long, but in the terms of ha hazardous lives, short lives. 600 years potentially toxic. Cesium-137 looks like potassium, which exists throughout our body in every tissue. It is a powerful gamma emitter with the possibility of causing cancer from external exposure <clears throat> or ingestion, causing dangerous exposure to any part of the body. It too has a half-life of 30 years, also hazardous for about 600 years. Plutonium-239 is perhaps the deadliest substance on our planet. It is a powerful alpha emitter with intense ionizing radiation risk. If inhaled at a less than a millionth of an ounce, it will cause lung cancer in 100% of those exposed. It has a 24,000 year half-life and is hazardous for half a million years. Different radionuclides can concentrate in different organs or give the whole body a dose. There is no safe level of radiation. All exposure increases the risk of cancer including the potential for cancer in one's offsprings. The chemical contaminants at the lab are a veritable witch's brew of toxic materials. Many indeed are carcinogens, others are neurotoxins, some can cause birth defects and other health effects. The lab is loaded with perchlorate, PCBs, dioxin, heavy metals, volatile organic compounds like TCE and many, many others. There have been numerous studies raising warning flags. UCLA, UCLA did a major federally funded study of the workers on site, finding that the radiation workers had significantly increased risks of death from key cancers, with the rates increasing with the amount of their exposure. The people with the highest exposure had triple the death rates from those cancers as compared with lower exposed workers. They found a similar pattern for increased cancer death rates among those associated with exposure to the toxic chemicals associated with the rocket testing. The University of Michigan, also funded by the federal government, found rates of key cancers were more than 60 times higher higher, closer to the site than further away. And by key cancers, we mean cancers associated in the scientific literature with radiation and chemical exposures to the elements on site, although they can cause other cancers as well. Another federally funded study at UCLA found that contaminants had left the lab and people near the site were likely exposed at levels far in excess of the EPA levels of concern. All told, the pattern is clear. Sloppy environmental practices contaminated the field lab with radioactivity and toxic chemicals, which are harmful to health. They have migrated off site. Workers on site develop cancer from the exposures. Off site, the public has been exposed to pollutants above EPA, EPA levels of concern. Elevated cancers are associated with proximity to the site. While there is no proof that the pediatric cancers that Melissa and her fellow moms and families have tragically experienced are caused by Santa Susana Field Lab, it is plausible that at least some are. What can be said is that the radionuclides and toxins that contaminate the site and continue to migrate off the site to this day do indeed 
cause these types of cancers. The Morgenstern study did not assert that there was no risk further than two miles away. It merely compared cancer incidence within two miles to further out to further out to see if there was I'm sorry compared areas within two miles to that further out to see if there was a gradient suggested at the from the Santa Susana field effect. Contamination migration does not stop at a magic two mile two mile mark. It continues to flow off site. This is what we know. Santa Susana Field Lab is contaminated. Con contamination does not stay on that mountain. It migrates. Studies indicate elevated risks off-site associated with the Santa Susana Field Lab contamination. The only thing that can be done and must be done is to finally get the site cleaned up so that no one is ever exposed or hurt again. The Department of Energy promised a full cleanup it has broken its promise and now wants to leave most of the contamination there. That must not be allowed and must, they must be held to their commitments. Thank you.